What's up, you guys? It's Van Casement from, from Canadian Video File coming to you on YouTube. What are we doing today? Well, <clears throat> first off, apologies for taking a little bit longer. Lost the momentum there with YouTube videos. Not really, not just wrapping up the season and kind of getting busy with what's going on over here and trying to make this kind of the full time thing like some of you, some of you might already know about. Uh, but moving on, we also decided to take a little different shift in direction with these videos also. So here we go, intro to advancing snake keeping. So uh, I actually made sure I remembered that. Uh, but what, what I mean by advancing snake keeping, now everyone knows about snake keeping, right? I mean, you go on you, you Google and not YouTube. Uh, you can go on YouTube too and uh, just type in your, your species and care sheet or care or whatever it is and boom, 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 you get all this information, right? Now, cool, what, what, what's happening with this information? Or what do you do with this information? What's happening out there? Why am I hearing about guys that are going on about, well, I don't know, someone told me this and it's a completely conf conflicting information for that species or, or I've heard from a vet this or I heard from a care sheet that said this, or I heard it from a friend, a buddy or blah, 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 you know, and it's, and it's all and care and, and that is not just different from what I'm talking about, but is not working for the animal, clearly not working for the animal and that's why they were reaching out to begin with. So. What is going on here with this information? Why, why is this information the crisscross that's happening here? Now, that's why I want to take this a little further with advancing snake keeping. Okay, let's, let's face it, guys. Snake keeping is about part knowledge, right? We've got knowledge. We've got the facts. We've got this, our biologists out there doing the, this, 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 uh, the data sheets on these pro, uh, species and then the profiles on the species and stuff. And then you've got the breakdown, you've got the scalation, your range maps, all the sorts, right? You've got all that to start with. That's what I started with when I, you know, when I was going onto libraries and, and trying to look up snake books and, and every snake book and every library, I had to like read them all. It wasn't no internet and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough guys, but. So that's how it was, right? And, and that's the facts that we were starting off with. And then now we have the facts based off of the keepers that have learned that fact also, right? So we got this other shift, uh, not shift, but a difference in perspective in what's going on too. So the knowledge now, there's a difference in that knowledge. Why? Because it's a little difference in understanding, guys. Because now what I'm talking about understanding is everything's based on an individual's, individual's perception of you know, everyone hears about the oh, it's all an experience and it's your personal experience, right? <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure the outfit, really, I'm not, by the way, I'm not, I didn't plan this outfit. Um, this is just supposed to be a test run and it just felt like wearing it today. I don't even think this video is going to make it, but I'm just hitting the record to go with it. So this ends up on there, pure coincidence. <laughs> but anyways, uh, what I'm talking about, understanding, the deeper understanding I'm talking about is understanding the animal, guys. Looking at the snake to the snake's mind not yours now when I, when I talk about mine about the snake's behavior that's what i'm talking about we're not talking about just plug and play things where i like just do 75 85 uh let's just uh it's a desert animal just put a 90 watt bulb on it a heat man on it you know put the substrate on it you're pitching you know like that's what i think is happening what's you know what's what's wrong in that process uh now that's why we have to get to the difference and where the advancing comes in with the deeper understanding with what we have to have with our animal, especially after purchasing. If we've got the basics down, let's just face it guys, online care sheets, the Google Docs version, Google care sheets or whatever you want, the, the wiki house, right? That's what it's called, the wiki house. I keep looking over there that Johnny's over there, but he's not actually over here. He was here helping me set up. But <clears throat> just, just, just roll with it anyways. Right, but like with the wiki house, why are we doing the wiki house of things and expecting everything to be perfect after the fact? Because long term, why are we seeing keepers just kind of lose, lose out of the hobby? Like just kind of you know phase out. Like I don't know, it's just doing its thing, and I've been feeding it, it grows, and now it's sure. done growing, and it uh, doesn't do anything else. Like, well, what what are they missing? What what is the difference between someone like me that can take? something like that to a passion I, I might get it not everyone's going to get to this level of madness that's like i mean this is really you haven't seen what's behind this yet the corner <laughs> but you know what i mean there's no uh that you can throttle that thankfully but what i'm talking about is the long-term enrichment when you get from a pet i mean dog owners when they have dogs from the start they've enriched their lives and and they carry on and they want that 
you know, and I'm not talking about emotional attachment here, guys. Okay, there's a, le a difference here. It's a difference about understanding the level, and that's why keepers, zookeepers, I'm um, talking about the stuff, the, differ the different understanding that, say, native tribes of India have or other native tribes have or, or long-term keepers get after a while anyways through the experience of the animal that they keep too, right? And that's why I'm talking about a deeper understanding here. Now, I want to get away from anthropomorphizing here too because it's easy to just go there like, oh, buddy, looks like he needs affection today. And like, no, no, we don't, we don't want to use those terms because snakes are, we don't know yet. Let's just put it this way. We don't know. Science is maybe not there yet or maybe it never needs to be with emotions and snakes. But what I'm talking about is, is with anthropomorphizing is we got to stop looking at the snake through just our mind and what we expect the snake to relate to its environment compared to what the snake actually is relating to, to its environment. If your snake is staying hidden for the first five days when you just get receive it and you're upset, I bought this thing and it's not doing anything, it just stays hidden the whole time, I don't get to see it. Dude, like you gotta understand the animal, you gotta understand the process, and that's what I'm talking about, taking you deeper in, into understanding and all that, and tying into advancing snake keeping. Now, yeah, you guys know I'm a colubrid guy, right? Okay, I gotta, I gotta, just, just give me, a, just give me a few moments here about colubrids here, okay? Because I'm gonna use colubrids mainly as my subjects in most of these videos to show you guys what I'm talking about, uh, for two reasons, mainly because they're a little more of a reactive snake. And it's easier to observe the behaviors because they act quicker. It's the way I, I see it. Uh, with pythons and boas and other primitive snakes. With other primitive snakes, they, the response time is, is not necessarily slower. They're very ambush predator based. So they, the whole purpose is to not respond to the environment until most needed. And if they do, it's a very subtle, it's even more subtle, right? So the way I look at it is like, colubrids are more obvious, okay? Basically, colubrids are more obvious, and that's why I'm really going with them, guys, right? And you can see the same thing with bows and pythons. If you do take the time to key into your animal, it is there. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Like I said, that's this colubrid snake group, like a colubrid python group that I, I could call it, like these guys, right? You can tell when they respond to the keeper that there's thought and there's thinking. You can, any keeper that has kept these species long term can vouch for that, that these animals are, are a little bit more advanced than most others. And, and I didn't get a chance to get a video of a retic yet. I think I did get a chance to retic. I don't know. Did I get it yet, Chris? I'm not sure. We'll put a video if we get it in time to get it. Okay. But, uh, and like retics and stuff, they, they function on a little higher level. Let's just put it that way. What am I talking about here? By the way, um, if you guys can't read this, I uh, apologize because I will get a bigger board time crunch and we just went with it right now. So I do apologize. There will be a bigger board with more legible writing, hopefully. <laughs> uh, what am I talking about? Promises, you guys. My, I, what I promise you guys is I'm going to promise you guys a deeper insight into your keeping experience of your animal, into your breeding knowledge. I'm going to I'm going to promise you a longer fulfillment of your animal too as a keeper. If you only have just the one gecko, if you just have five snakes, or you have 200 animals and you're like, all right, this is cool, this is cool, but I'm like, I don't know, I'm not doing anything more with them and sales are not really going anywhere and blah, blah, you know. Come on, let's, let's just get into the real stuff here, okay? Let's just talk about the stuff that really drives some of us that, to do what we do. Uh, and that's the, that's the advancing part of this, right? So... I promise you guys, we'll take you deeper into all of that. And how are we going to do that? One of the ways is we're going to break past the boundary. We've got to get past the grid, okay? Let's just move past the numbers. Let's get out of the number zones. Let's get out of the, the temperature gradient zones. Let's get out of the minimum weight zones. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I, I know I always seem to come across like I'm ragging on a ball python keepers. It's not the keepers. They're lovely people. It's the hobby that just ended up twisting it the way it, meant it turned to be um, the reliance on the minimum weight thing. So stop with the minimum weight numbers and stop with the parameters with uh, keeping and stuff like that. Oh, the 60, 70 plug in, plug and play stuff, right? I mean, that works on a basic level, but let us not, not, come on, let's just not talk about basic minimum requirements and then wonder why we're only having a minimum experience out of this. So let's get away from that now. There will be homework. There will definitely be homework. Uh, and I want that to be, 
the reason why I'm doing that with homework, guys, is because I want you guys to really practice this at homes and with your own animals. It's not difficult at all. It doesn't matter what animal it is. This is, this is literally applicable, applicable to anything you could observe, basically. If you have an instrument that to observe it with that you can't even observe with your own eyes, use it and you could. And this is across the whole board, right? So this is what I'm talking about here. It's basically, well... I will tell you the rest of it in the next videos right here, but that will be homework here, guys, okay? So, um, thank you guys for putting out with me this long rambling here about this idea of mine. Um, thank you for the support that brought me this far, even all these videos. I look forward to the next set of videos we got for you guys, okay? Um, yeah, this might be the final take, so I don't know. Shit. Ugh, I got nothing.